In order to talk about the limit of a function of one variable, I've drawn a little fictitious railroad. Uh, and I've drawn it on a flat map where we have markings along the x-axis and we have markings along the y-axis. The markings along the x-axis are going to represent longitude the same way they would in an ordinary map. And uh, likewise, the markings along the y-axis are going to represent latitude. Uh, as you can see, I drew a, a little rendering of a, a station at longitude of three and a latitude of two. It is at that point that I want to discuss the behavior of the tracks. In particular, I want to discuss the behavior as we move along the tracks from the west and then as we move along the tracks coming from the east. Now with our attention focused on x is equal to three, as we move along the tracks from the west, you can see that we're going to a latitude of two. So as we move towards a longitude of three from the west, we, we uh, approach a latitude of two. Similarly, as we move towards a longitude of three from the east, we are also approaching a latitude of two, right? See, we move, uh, uh, there's, there's two things happening here. We're moving along the x-axis towards a longitude of three from the right side, and, uh, and corresponding to that, we're moving towards a latitude of two. Um, uh, as we as we move along the tracks towards uh, the longitude of three from the right. Now this is precisely what we want to happen if we want to build a functioning railroad, right? We don't want the tracks to be going to two different places. But sometimes things go wrong. So let's now look at a picture when things go wrong and we'll talk about that. For now, I want you to just keep in your mind that as we approach a longitude of three from the left, we're going to a latitude of two. And as we approach a longitude of three from the right, we're going towards also a latitude of two. Now in this case, there's a problem because as we approach three, a longitude of three from the right, now we're going to a height of three or a latitude of three. You see, we're approaching three from the right and we're going to a height, a latitude of three. Whereas we're still approaching a latitude of two as we approach a longitude of three from the left. So of course, for a functioning railroad, this is highly problematic. And uh, the people of the station have no idea what to do at this particular point. You see, I'm going to use this as a metaphor to begin to talk about the limit of a function of one variable. So instead of railroad tracks, now we just have a curve. And we would like to talk about the behavior of this curve around a, an, an x-coordinate of three. We no longer have to think of it as longitude, but if you like, that's fine. So uh, in order to discuss the behavior of the curve as, a, as it approaches three, we can talk about what happens to the height of the curve as we move along it as the x-coordinate approaches three from the left and right. Well, we have notation for that. So here's the notation that we're going to use. Limit f of x, x approaches three with a minus sign. Okay, so to translate this into words, all it means is the same question that we asked about the railroad before. It means what height is the function approaching as x approaches three from the left. Maybe I should use a different word. I should say, what height is the function going towards, right? I mean, approaching works also, right? You know, look, this is the drawing says it all, right? What height 
is the function going towards as we approach three from the left, okay? So you can see my, my right hand is approaching three from the left, but my left hand is going along the curve. And when you ask that limit question, you're asking what height is the function going to as we ride along the curve approaching three from the left. Well, clearly the answer in this particular case is equal to two. Good? See, it's the same question as before. What height, what latitude were the railroad tracks going to as we approached uh, a longitude of three from the west? Okay, that's this is the exact same question. Well, of course, we have, you know, we can ask the same question as we approach three from the right. And the notation for that is limit f of x, x approaches three with a plus sign. Now you see, this, this plus sign and minus sign doesn't refer to negative three or positive three, it refers to direction. What height are we approaching? What height is the function approaching as x moves along the x-axis from three uh, to three from the left? And that we, we decided was two. Well, you know, asking the same question from the right, we can say what height is the function going to as we approach three from the right? And that answer is also two. And remember I said for a functioning railroad, that's exactly what we want. I won't rewrite this definition. All you have to do is replace the word left with right to uh, give uh, a definition of what that notation represents. Now, because the limit from the left is equal to two as we approach three, and the limit as we approach three from the right is equal to two, we say that the limit as we approach three, regardless of direction, exists and is equal to the common value two, in which case we write limit f of x as x approaches three equals two. Now, when people are first exposed to this craziness, some confusion arises around this uh, filled in dot above x equals three. The way it is here indicates that the function's value at three is equal to two, in, in which case we write f of three equals two. But this value has nothing to do with the question as to whether the limit exists or not. The question about the limit involves the curve, not the value of the function at three, and still is defined by uh, the limit from the left and the limit from the right. Whether or not there is a filled in dot, a solid dot, or an open dot here, the limit still exists at three for this particular uh, uh, diagram, and uh, it is equal to two. So let's just go ahead and unfill that dot. There, now we have an open circle at three. So, which indicates nothing. We don't know what the function's value is at three. In, as a matter of fact, what we would do in this case is probably write f of three is undefined. As there is no information given. Nevertheless, the limit as x approaches three of f of x is still equal to two. We can still write the limit of f of x as x approaches three is equal to two because the height of the function from the left is going to two, and the height of the function coming from the right is equal to two. Thus, the limit exists and is equal to the common value of two. Okay, so I've drawn this uh, new function uh, to correspond to the pathology that existed with the railroad tracks when you know, I drew the uh, second example. And you can see here, there's a, you know, there's a break in the function. But once again, we want to use our new terminology to discuss precisely what's happening around that break. Uh, in particular, uh, using the notation we just introduced before, we can say that the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the left, remember that this does not mean negative 3, this means x is going to be approaching three from the left, and we want to see the corresponding height of the function. Well, of course, that's equal to two. 
but let's move along the function as we approach three from the right hand side. You see, as we approach, if, as we take a ride on this function, as we approach three from the right, here's three, here's the right. As we approach three from the right hand side, as X approaches three from the right hand side, you can see that my right hand is approaching a Y value of three. Thus, we have that the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the right hand side is equal to 3. Well, you know, as, as it is intuitive to you, you can see a break in this function. From the perspective of mathematics, we can say that the limit of this function from the left is not equal to the limit of this function from the right. These are called one sided limits, okay? So, if the one-sided limits are not equal, in other words, the function from the left and right are going to two different heights, then we say that the limit does not exist. And when we, when we notate that, when we use these two facts, these two facts will imply that the limit of f of x as x approaches three, regardless of direction, does not exist. Okay, so, you know, this is just, again, new terminology. This is nothing new to you. You can see that this function has a problem at three. And the problem is precisely that the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. Okay. We can also use the railroad metaphor to talk about continuity. Now, if all's good with the railroad, then we would want, you know, it to look like this. We would want the tracks to be going to the right place. We would want a station to exist, and we would want the station to be there. All right, back to mathematics. Uh, the uh, the uh, function that, that is depicted here um, is, corresponds to the uh, good railroad. So we'll say that this is well behaved. And why is it well behaved? Well, because again, corresponding to the railroad, the, uh, li the uh, l limit exists, right? The railroad tracks, I guess, are going to the same place. The function's value exists, and the function's value is in the place indicated by the, uh, by the uh, limit, right? So in this particular case, what do we have? We have the limit of f of x it exists right as x approaches three that is all right that's our uh that's our point of concern so the limit of f of x as x approaches three exists and is equal to two all righty also the function's value at three is equal to two hey these two things agree and that is the notation that we're going to use for you know, a function that is continuous. I'll write that down in a more formal way uh, when, I look at, uh, when we look at uh, discontinuous functions. But you get the idea, right? If a function is gonna be continuous, if that's a good railroad, you want the limit to exist, you want the function's value to exist, and you want the function's value to be in the place indicated by the limit, right? As it is right here, okay? Now, a few different things could happen that could render a function discontinuous. And this is one of them. A function, uh, you see, has a limit when x is, uh, approaches three. I'll write that down, f of x, and we've discussed that before, of course. Uh, the limit as x approaches three exists and is equal to two. However, the function's value at three is uh, equal to one. And notice that there's a difference here, right? The function's value at three is not equal to the limit of the function at three. So when this happens, we say that the function is discontinuous at three. This is another example of a function which is discontinuous at three. Uh, here it is because the limit doesn't exist at three. Recall that in order for the limit to exist, we have to have the limit from the left has to equal the limit from the right. And at three, this is certainly not the case. The limit from the left is equal to two, whereas the limit from the right is equal to three. Thus, the limit doesn't exist. 
So in turn, the function is not continuous because the function's value is not equal to the limit of the function if indeed the limit doesn't exist at all. Here's yet another example of a function which is discontinuous at three. This time, it's because the function doesn't even exist at three. If the function is not defined at three, then it certainly cannot be that the limit of the function at three is equal to the function's value at three. So here we have f of three is undefined, whereas the limit of f of x as x approaches three is defined. In fact, it's equal to two, as you can see by the fact that the limit from the left equals two and the limit from the right is equal to two. Well, certainly these two cannot be equal if one of them doesn't even exist.